Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vipe. I really appreciate it. Secretary Panetta's word of mobilization and mobilizing does strike me as the most important thing. And I'm so impressed with Vipe and his team for mobilizing and remobilizing to have you here today. So let's hear it for Vipe. I want to begin on the introduction of Altice with a video. So we begin with a video and we can roll tape right now. Thank you. Our mantra is to go where no one has gone before on planet Earth. Never doubt for a minute that a small group of passionate people can change the world. The adventurers, the innovators, the ones who refuse to accept the status quo. The world is a much better place because their brilliance was given a place to shine. At Altice, our mission is to develop the most innovative ocean research campus in the world. Together, we will turn to the ocean to develop solutions for the planet's most pressing problems and to prepare today's generation of students for future jobs in science, technology, engineering, and business. The beauty of Altice at the Port of Los Angeles is that it invites folks from all over the world to come into this new economy of ideas. It provides an opportunity for our youth, our children as they're coming up, to learn in the sciences and to learn these new jobs in the new economy. Altice's most prominent partner in education is Dr. Bob Ballard, the man who discovered the Titanic. The technology that we had on the Titanic compared to what we have now is two cans and a string. We can reach out to any kid in the LA Basin into their schools and excite them and motivate them and get them to want to study a little harder in school. The reason I became a marine biologist started when I was about seven or eight years old and they had a program going out of 22nd Street Landing and at that age I realized I wanted to become a marine biologist so it started with field trips in the port. Dr. Dan Pandela is the director of the Southern California Marine Institute. SCMI conducts ocean research studies out of their headquarters on Terminal Island. The Marine Institute will relocate across the channel to their new cutting edge research facility on the campus of Altice. One of the great things about the Altice location is the educational institutions that are so close that we can provide an environment for students to come here uh, very easily. So we've got the Port of Los Angeles Maritime High School, we've got Marymount College, the Waterfront Campus, we have the John Olguin Campus. This will be the place where they can come for field trips, for research projects. This will truly be a place for the community. As the principal of the local middle school here, um, we're about eight blocks away. And so it really brings everything to life because we connect the classroom to what they're doing. They've taken walking field trips down here. They have an opportunity to meet with real scientists to actually put some application to some of the theoretical things that they're reading about in the book. So I'm excited just to, to start to get those opportunities for them because really education and engaging education is the key to making sure that kids stay involved in what they want to do. Well, we say it over and over again, but uh, Altice really is a game changer. Um, what, what Altice is going to bring are high skill, high paying jobs that will allow our children and their children to stay here in San Pedro. I think right here in Los Angeles, which has always been known for innovation, that uh, building a space at Altice uh, is going to help uh, you know, be a catalyst to create an innovation district where you're going to bring great minds together from the scientific community, from the business community, and people from the educational institutes to uh, all be able to work together on a daily basis, turn these ideas into businesses and jobs. In the last century, our greatest discoveries were in space. And those discoveries in space resulted in a booming aerospace economy here in the Southern California region. There is 90% of the ocean that we haven't explored. We know more about the face of Mars than we know about the bottom of the ocean. A place like Altice is going to encourage discovery in the ocean and bring about the next great boom in our economy, which we call the blue economy. The initial two clusters that Altice is going to be working on is blue technology and sustainable aquaculture. Blue technology is basically underwater robotics. And underwater robotics are now being used for a myriad of purposes. Certainly basic exploration, like going and looking under the Arctic sea ice and down into the deep sea trenches. So much of our ocean is unexplored. The second cluster is sustainable aquaculture. Aquaculture uh, is a really great opportunity 
to enhance food security for the United States, and also for us to learn how we can grow protein for the world sustainably. San Pedro has historically been the center of the tuna fishing industry, where our parents caught and canned tuna. And in the future, this is going to be the richest area in the country for aquaculture, where we're going to be growing sustainable foods. And it's going to create jobs, and it's also going to create food security for the future. Alta Sea does it across the board. Good jobs, something good for our environment, and a way to create prosperity in a town that's had it for many generations and needs to create it for the next. Alta Sea is going to be our Google here in the harbor area. We need to be the next tech hub in the city of Los Angeles. Those knowledge-based jobs are so critical. You know, for an architect, I've been with Gensler for 36 years. We've worked on projects around the globe, but I could tell you there's no more important project than this Alta Sea project. It is a game changer. It's about the future of Los Angeles. It's about our children's children. The ocean is our final frontier. It is the place that we can now turn to to help solve some of the greatest world's challenges, and Alta Sea is gonna be at the center of that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, again, for having us here and for being here today. So what is Alta Sea? It is a 37-acre site at City Dock 1 in the port of Los Angeles. It's an area, and it's a 50-year lease. It's an area of the port that is now unused. It's old industrial land that cannot be used given the new technologies and the new sizes of the ships. City Dock 1 was the original site in the port uh, for the industrial, the industrial uses that you see here today. What we're trying to do, and what, we are, what our mission is, as is your mission, is to create, a place to, re, to create a place where we have a center of learning, center of research, center of community engagement, all focused on the same thing you're focused on, ocean sustainability. By the time we have built out Alta Sea, we will have, the 501c3 will have spent well over $100 million. Our budget currently is for $150 million. The port is on the hook to spend tens of millions of dollars on the infrastructure that surrounds this beautiful site. Our model, as you heard some of on the, on the tape, is that we are going to be a center for science, and I'll discuss SCMI in a moment. We'll be a center for science that accelerates a center for business a center for business that accelerates science, all of which is engaged with education from pre-K all the way through the universities. And the idea with Alta C, in addition to the science and the business, is to engage kids and to create that future, generations of, future generation of scientists, of innovators in the ocean, who are going to solve you know, the Earth's problems. It begins with a great set of partners. This slide grows day by day, and we have a number of business and education and community partners. Probably the most significant for us is that we have something called SCMI, the Southern California Marine Institute. It is an existing collaboration of 23 universities, including USC, UCLA, Occidental, the state colleges, all of whom are in marine biology, and currently operating at Terminal Island and conducting research and operations there in an outdated, antiquated facility. They are going to be moving to our site and making the SCMI center one of our buildings, which is going to be critically important to the business hub, which is right next door to them. You saw Dr. Sandra Whitehouse on the video. Dr. Sandra Whitehouse came to us as a consultant, continues with us. She's our chief scientific officer. But her initial consultation with us is to say, don't try to be all things to all people. Focus on a couple of areas. She wanted us to focus on sustainable aquaculture, because the San Pedro Shelf has a great opportunity, has at least 28,000 acres of water that would be ideal for sustainable aquaculture. And she said also focus on blue robotics, focus on discovery within the ocean, which is what we've done. We get pulled in other directions, but we're trying to focus on those two clusters where we will have basically uh, our anchor tenants as well as the, the startup companies that surround them. But our most important mission and I think all of our most important mission is community outreach, to conduct education and to 
cause folks to understand this great need that we have in the ocean. Our primary partnership was with something called the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Los Angeles Harbor. And the Boys and Girls Clubs are a coalition themselves of a number of clubs that serve 10,000 kids on a regular basis. 2,200 kids come through their property a day. Virtually all of these kids are living under the poverty line. And we are creating opportunities for them to engage in every aspect of our project. So our first phase of the project, and we're missing a slide here, our first phase, our first project within first phase is the Innovation Center. It's the adaptive reuse of three warehouses on the site, 180,000 square feet of existing warehouse that looks much like this warehouse, though larger. We have three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back warehouses, and within those will be the business hub or the business center where we will be inviting businesses to come in to rent space and to uh, innovate within the ocean. As you continue through that building to the dock, this is an artist's rendering of what the dock will look like. The good news is, is that we're already activating the site. We have some tenants in, and we also have 4,000 linear feet of dock, and we have several research vessels that come call on us, and one, Dr. Ballard in the Nautilus, that makes Alta Sea his home. That becomes one of the primary opportunities for bringing kids through and showing them, showing them the research vessel. Once we complete the business hub, we will continue on to what we call the educational pavilion. It's an open space now that will have this cantilevered auditorium style view. Once we complete that, we will move on to the science center. The science center is that towards the front of the property, you see the existing north facade of the building, then you see the new science center, which will be that home of SCMI, those 23 universities, actively working with them now on the circulating water systems and their needs for their research in their labs. And then when we've completed that research center, we will move on to the engagement center. This is this you know, beautiful entrance to the property. It's a Gensler design. It's won many awards. It will be the primary visitor serving entrance to the property, which will have several amenities. If you're wondering who will pay for this, um, the good news is we've raised lots of money. We will be operating on a business model of contributed income of well-intentioned foundations and well-intentioned folks, you know, giving us money for the capital expenditures. And then the business hub itself shows itself to have a carryover of revenue year by year by year once we have it fully occupied. And you'll see that we've spent about $5 million. We have all of the documents done. We have all of the EIRs, the permits, the leases, the subleases, everything negotiated and done. We're raising towards the Innovation Center and have obtained a significant portion of that and we're activating the, the Innovation Center so that we have uh, earned income on that. And you see the Wharf Plaza is a, um, a, also a significant lift towards which we have uh, a couple of million dollars raised. So it's a big, audacious project. And I have a fantastic team around me, helping me, and my colleague and partner, uh, Jenny Caruso, uh, our executive director, is here to take the second portion of this presentation and discuss aspects of the blue economy around which our entire mission is based. So Jenny Crusoe, Executive Director of Alta Sea. Well, I'm really excited to be here today. I wish we were at Alta Sea, but that's a whole different thing. Um, I've been with the project for six years. Um, I'm very happy that Vipe asked us to be here today. He gave me the task of giving a positive speech about the state of the ocean. So let me begin by recognizing that we are facing many challenges, as you've already seen in, in the Honorable Panetta's uh, video. Um, but challenges also can be the catalyst for innovation and opportunities. And I can say there are infinite opportunities in, on the horizon. Um, as we said, or Tim said, we focus on the blue economy. We focus on solutions, rapid solutions, and so we're a perfect fit for where we are, which is California. California is the state of pioneering innovations. It is the biggest gross economy in the United States. So to us, it can be the leader in the blue economy. So the bottom line to me is the current state of the ocean is a huge opportunity for the state of California to leverage. So let me go back a little bit and talk about how humans can solve problems 
with speed when they're motivated. Uh, think of all the advances made in the last 50 years. I'd like to start in 1961 when President John Kennedy uh, kind of threw down the gauntlet and said, let's put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. We did it in eight years. We had one year to spare. So that's the famous step of Neil Armstrong in 1969. But let's go back a little further to 1609 with Galileo and think about the fact that when he first looked through his telescope and saw the moon, do you think that he imagined that one day we would walk on the moon? Well, maybe he did because um, you know, people with vast imaginations like Galileo probably did dream big. Um, but in 1969, which I do remember, I was very young, but I do remember it, um, uh, the, walking, the man walking on the, uh, Neil Armstrong walking on the moon was a great accomplishment, but I don't think the average person really, really knew what that would lead to. Our decision to explore space created a booming aerospace industry in California, and with it came products like the cell phone that all of us have, satellite TV, Internet of Things, 3D printing, and it goes on and on and on all because we decided to explore space. So in the second half of the 20th century, the aerospace industry created a huge vital economy to California. So why not in the 21st century can industries be revolutionized by exploring the ocean? Um, it's already happening. I, Boeing has already moved into the ocean with their amazing Echo Voyager. And with over 90% of the ocean unexplored, the blue economy has opportunities that we can yet to imagine now. Um, with the long, beautiful coastline of California, our undeniable pioneering spirit, the technological superiority, and the progressive environmental history, California is perfectly positioned to be the epicenter of this new sector. Now, I'm going to start with some numbers. So it is estimated over the next 10 years that there'll be thousands of innovations to the blue economy, which will create hundred, a hundred, hundreds of million, wait, a hundred million jobs. Um, as uh, Tim said, we have an amazing chief scientific officer who's almost been with the project three years, Dr. Sandra Whitehouse. And when she came in, she, she decided we would focus on sustainable aquaculture and blue technology. Um, she's also now turning her attention to maybe a third focus area of energy. Um, and also we have um, kind of an underlining focus of plastics in the water um, with five gyres and the longest swim being at all to see. Um, so we already have an existing blue economy, which is built on shipping, which obviously everyone at the Port of Los Angeles sees every day, fishing, offshore energy, recreating, nature watching, and ecosystem services like uh, coastal erosion and storm surge protection. In 2015, the World Wildlife Foundation said that the ocean economy is about $24 trillion in value in econo a direct economic wealth. Of course, all these activities, it can't, I can't go on without saying, need oversight to protect the ocean. Obviously, we are all aware of the harmful, uh, how harmful oil spills are and how overfishing has affected the ocean. Plastics have a huge effect. Um, I think we all can agree, and I think probably Matt at the X Prize will talk about it, that we need to move toward a circular economy where we have no waste. Um, an example, of course, is the right whales that were, was in the, the paper yesterday. Um, three of these endangered whales were found dead because they were entangled in fishing line, gear, and now it looks like there are no sightings of new calves of the right whales. So the emerging blue economy, um, during the past few decades, other ocean uses, uses have been added. Um, we now can ship in the Arctic. We have industrial scale offshore aquaculture. We have renewable energy products that capture energy from waves and currents and wind, um, ocean systems like the ocean thermal energy conversion technologies. 
Uh, the future uses and the new uses we have are uh, floating platforms for wind, um, open uh, ocean cages to grow fish, and then floating ports. All of these images actually do exist. Um, we are also seeing a vast array of projects that are going to be considered for the future but haven't been implemented. Microsoft is looking at these pods that actually contain servers and are using the ocean to cool their servers. Um, and again, they're, we're looking, they're looking at how this affects the ocean from the heat being absorbed. Altice is in discussions with a company that is putting these uh, data technology centers onto barges, and we're very excited about that partnership. So on top of all of, the, uh, of these emerging uses, we have to talk about the state of the ocean and how it's affecting um, uh, uses and these environmental conditions. One example is the shift in the density of lobsters. So in 1995, they, the population was in southern New England, and in uh, 2014, the epicenter of the population was off uh, of Maine. Um, so other uses, uh, as we use our oceans more and more, there is a growing need to, for data collection in real time. And one of the successful examples of this is the Whale Alert app that can be used by ship pilots to determine where tag whales are located in real time to avoid whale strikes. As Dr. Ballard mentioned in the video, technology is moving very, very, very fast. Um, and we have been exploring the ocean and collecting information for over 100 years. Um, an example uh, that I, I just learned, because I had to give a lecture on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which happens to be the book that uh, inspired Dr. Ballard to go to sea. The first Nautilus was a submarine that was in uh, 1800. It was at an a, a ex exhibit that actually gave Jules Verne the, the name for his submarine. It had a sail of, of paper, for, and that's how it was propel propelled on the ocean surface, um, which was made of Nautilus paper. Um, so if you think of the technology on that submarine to the technology on the exploration vessel Nautilus that bursts at Altice when it's not out exploring, it's, it's night and day. And it actually looks like the first submarine is a child's toy. Um, today, underwater robots um, come in all shapes and sizes and have numerous purposes. Now there's actually a white one that is called Sophie for so soft robotics fish. It was designed by MIT scientists to better observe the lives and habitats of the ocean fish. It is an untethered robot, which is, is unusual. It can go 65 feet under the surface of the water, and it can go for 45 minutes without um, having to come to the surface. Um, robots are used for monitoring. Um, the impacts of one example was they were used for monitoring the impacts of the Deepwater Horizon spill um, in the Gulf of Mexico. Another one of Altice's partners is SCUS, the Southern California Coastal Ocean Observing System, that has a critical role in data collection management. Um, and they've donated an exhibit to Altice, which I hope you can come see someday. Um, also, underwater robots are used to. Um, are deployed to assess fish stocks and assist managing uh, managers in setting catch, catch limits, as well as to, to survey invasive species, um, such as the lionfish. They're also used in, in conservation. Um, so both conservation groups and scientists send underwater robots to places like submarine canyons to determine deep sea corals and, and how to recommend that they are conserved. Um, and then, of course, exploring. Um, our key partner uh, is Ocean Exploration Trust, and they explore the ocean for um, mapping the marine protected areas and sanctuaries, as well as to look for um, uh, vessels of historic um, importance. I think most everyone knows Dr. Ballard was the man who found the wreckage of the Titanic. Um, they're also used um, 
for searching for, uh, unfortunately, for planes. A company called Ocean Infinity is using eight submarine drones to try to find the wreckage of um, Malaysia Airline Flight 370. Um, these drones can cover 463 square miles a day, which is pretty incredible. And uh, on the money side of this, they are being paid $70 million to try to locate that wreckage. This robot um, is used uh, to check the lines from wind turbines from the, their location in the ocean to land to see if they're disturbed by storms or uh, commercial fishing. Uh, robots are always also used in sustainable aquaculture. Um, they are used in a myriad of ways, that, um, from uh, checking the nets to feeding the fish. And in the case of uh, Catalina Sea Ranch, they also monitor the ocean acidification. Um, Alta Sea's partners in this are companies that are big and small, uh, from Boeing, which is developing a 30-foot ROV, Echo Voyager, which is designed to explore deep under the Arctic ice and into deep trenches, to Blue Robotics, who are here, uh, which makes smaller robots that are used in many industries in the blue economy. And in fact, they are, their robots are used by Catalina Sea Ranch. Um, both these, um, actually, both Catalina Sea Ranch and uh, Blue Robotics uh, were, uh, have worked with Ann Carpenter, who is at Alta Sea with her company, Braid Theory. So you can start seeing how everything kind of connects in the big, big campus that we're building at Alta Sea. Now, Bob is also our chief uh, kind of lead education partner. He uses these underwater robots as educational tools. Last year, there was 168 teachers that were trained, 8,800 students directly reached, and almost 2 million students that viewed the live stream to their ship. Also, Bob is an incredible, has incredible media impact. On Facebook, he reaches over three, 4 million people, on Twitter, over 5 million people, and on YouTube, 30 million people, which is pretty incredible. Um, so the last piece of all to see, which is something that uh, Tim touched on, is we're very, very focused on creating technical training and job skills. Um, we believe that we have to uh, inspire the next generation to be part of the blue economy and to study a little harder, as Bob likes to say, and, and go to the, look to the ocean for solutions, but in, in a sustainable way for our future. So in conclusion, um, I'd like to say that we at Alta Sea are working to make this campus an important center of the blue economy. Our partners are innovators and researchers and educators and entrepreneurs who are working to find these rapid solutions to our planet's challenges. The ocean holds the answers to clean energy, uh, food security for our growing population, and the key to the solutions to our climate change issues. Alta Sea wants to use our property. And I believe, in fact, and I've been quoted a lot, I think it's the most important piece of property in the world, to create a campus that's dedicated to a better future and inspiring the next generation to work hard, really hard, for a sustainable planet. Alta Sea is all blue, and California has always been ahead of its time. We are perfectly positioned to use our coastline to advance the blue economy with speed and advocacy. I'd like to end with Jerry Brown. Uh, California's mayor, I'm, governor, sorry, has been quite blunt on our need to act now for climate change. I believe he said that our human civilization is on the chopping block, and he's right. Um, the coming years will be defining. We humans are geniuses when we pay attention, but we're also really good at turning away. Um, I'm asking all of us to pay attention now, because now is the time for everyone to contribute to the solution. So let's do it, and let's do it together. Thank you for listening to me, and I think we have five minutes if you have questions. Great job, Jenny. Thank Whoa. you. <laughs> Didn't I scare you? I'm sorry. <laughs> We do have a couple of minutes for, uh, a few minutes for questions. Are there any qu questions out there regarding Alta Sea or Jenny's comprehensive discussion of the blue economy?
And if not, we can turn it back over to Vibe. So again, thank you so much for um, being interested in Alt-C. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes, sir. The question is, when do you plan on breaking ground? Since we're, we're, in, since we're fill dirt, we're actually not breaking ground, but breaking a wall, we've already started. Uh, the, the first phase of the project includes that, those warehouses that I call 58 through 60, it's 180,000 square feet. We did a, a, a groundbreaking or an unveiling ceremony late last year in December with Mayor Garcetti and opened the Lacrette's Blue Economy Incubator small space where we're beginning to activate it with tenants. The expectation though is that, the expectation in the lease and the expectation from my board is that in the next 18 months we are going to complete the first 20 million dollars, 24 months, the first 20 million dollars on that entire 180,000 square feet of the, the business hub or the business center. It's a great question. Yes sir. And we'll be up and running. And so what we're going to be doing, we'll be up and running in the, in the business hub, including the wharf and water, while we're doing construction on the next project in phase one, which is the university campus. Yes, sir. There is value for the, uh, the funding on the special economic zone. Um, and we are actually investigating a couple of state, you know, state opportunities. Although I will say that we've we've focused on the you know the best, the fastest, and the most well-intentioned money is private money. We also have an EDA grant, which is an Economic Development Federal grant, for three million dollars. And I will say just for this crowd, that the cost of spending three million dollars of the government's money costs you about three million dollars. You know, so. The best Four. money really are <laughs> folks that share our mission, and currently the federal government doesn't seem to share our mission. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic question. Are we envisioning international collaboration? The short answer is yes, um, and uh, we need to build towards that. I mean, we really have our hands full because when we negotiated the lease with the port, we have really beneficial terms. But one of the things we have is a, which is good, I think good for us, is that we have a really tight timetable to spend this money. And so we're sort of at the point now where we have to put blinders on and be really, really focused on build it. Sort of a build it and they will come sort of thing. And so having folks like Bob Ballard, he has this national, international presence. And we are talking to, we have talking to ships agents who are talking, who are talking to National Geographic. We're, we are in negotiations with Mbari, and I don't want to get out ahead of my skis, but we do have folks with real international cachet who look at us and say, that's great water, that's great wharf, that's great you know, um, birthing space, because it's the closest piece of land to the open ocean, by the way, in, in Los Angeles. And Los Angeles has well, you know, the most important shipping port in the United States. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. question is about the, um, the plastics in the ocean and, and what role would Alta Sea play. We've already begun to play it. I mean, early on we had the longest swim, which is... Uh, we still have the longest swim. We still have the longest swim, yeah. <laughs> thank I think, you, I think, XPRIZE. <laughs> I think that you, thank you, XPRIZE. I think they are setting sail for Tokyo late this week. Yes. And they're going to start in Tokyo, swim across the ocean. I mean, we have one swimmer, Dr. Ben? Yes, Leconte. Ben Leconte. Ben LeConte is going to swim across the ocean and through the plastics and monitor all along the way. Is it a publicity stunt? Yes. It's a really, really good one, a fantastic publicity stunt. They're going to be monitoring ocean acidification and the effects of plastics. Oh, and here we have, and we are, here we have members of our team, I think. Yes. Here we have members of the Longest Swim team. Let's hear it for them. So that... Really, in our initial phases, you know, we give them an opportunity to bring attention to the question. Uh, the idea is that as we bring in scientists and research vessels, we're going to be asking for, you know, open information so that everyone can share it. And so, what will what will all ro our role be? It'll be what we grow into, essentially. Other questions? And we're I think we're right at 24 seconds. Which can I just add though, where we can give space to? We have five gyres, junk raft. 
and I think it, it, we can help partners that are working in plastics by giving space to give them a voice. We actually focused one of our open houses on plastics and brought in a lot of experts to talk to the community. So in that way, we, we can kind of support the uh, plastics um, issue as an initiative, but not as a focus area because we really do need a business, a for-profit business to anchor the, the focuses that we work on. And there, we, one hasn't come to light with plastics. We have time for one last question, I think. I think I saw a hand, yes, sir. Yeah, the, the question was to expand on aquaculture. It can be a lot of things, but let me give you the first example. With Catalina Sea Ranch, which is uh, currently on site at Alta Sea, uh, they, what they have is the first federal permit in federal first permit in federal waters right on the Catalina Shelf for I think it's a thousand acres. A thousand, and they they planted a hundred. A thousand, a thousand acres of water, and what they what they do on the shelf, it's apparently it's just great geography in the ocean there between here and Catalina, to essentially plant a, you know, plant into the ocean with, um, uh, with tethers and with buoys, and the buoys have monitors on them to grow mussels. And mussels grow you know, clean and easy, and they're a cash crop. And so the idea is to create this, this cash crop that will come in on a regular basis and create a sustainable food source for the future that doesn't deplete you know, the ocean's fish. And so they're looking at other, at other crops, at other, other you know, food, so, food opportunities, and we are talking to two or three other companies right now who have taken notice of the fact that they're there, they want to come in, and so folks are looking at doing different things in the ocean, not just mussels. So the but yes, pro for profit. I mean, the idea of my model, or of our model, is to create an opportunity for businesses to come in, make a profit, you know, pay, pay rents to us, which we as a 501c3 then pump back into projects like plastics that might not have an economic model yet. And, and Catalina Sea Ranch is, is kind of working really well in the model in, in terms of they have, they participate in our workshops for our Boys and Girls Club to teach the Boys and Girls Club more about sustainable aquaculture. We have obtained a grant for, from Wells Fargo to actually do a six session workshop on aquaculture for the Boys and Girls Club that will be at Alta Sea at Catalina Sea Ranch. They've also partnered with two of the universities at the Southern California Marine Institute and obtained research grants, one in kelp, so they're expanding to kelp to actually uh, feed cattle to cut down on their, quote, emissions. Um, so, uh, so that's the way that cluster kind of is working. Again, on behalf of Jenny and the whole Alta Sea team, thank you very much for having us here.